My name is Jordan Gidry, and today I'm going to show you how to customize Immersive Reader. Just a reminder that you get to Immersive Reader by going to the LPSB homepage, clicking on Office 365. Once that loads, you will click on Word. So I'm going to show you today in Word. And then you will choose a document. Today I'm going to cr choose Create a Haiku. Once you choose your document, you're going to have different options on how to create or customize Immersive Reader for your child. Remember, you're going to go to View. Once you go to View, you choose Immersive Reader. Now your screen changes. You have three ways that you can customize up here in the top and then one at the bottom. The first one is this voice setting. You can choose female voice versus male voice. You also have the option to choose your speed slower versus faster. And notice the tortoise and the hare reference here. So I'm going to make mine go a little bit slower. And then when you hit the play button. Create haiku. Objectives you can see that it moves a little slower than normal. Now, here, your three options. Your first one is text preferences. Text preferences, when you choose, you have text size. You can make your text smaller by toggling over towards the left or larger by going towards the right. So those are great for students that have visual issues or might need a little bit larger font. Line spacing. You can turn line spacing off, and so you will notice that there is no space in between your lines, or you can toggle this on and create spaces between each line to differentiate where one line starts and where another ends. You also have three different options as far as font. You can choose the one that best fits you, and Comic Sans is used because of the way the A's are written and the uh, letters are very similar to the way that a student is taught to write. So this is great for emerging readers. Once you choose your font, you can also choose themes. Now, they show you that there's white, black, a tan, yellow, blue, green, but there are a lot more colors down here at the bottom. So you can choose the color overlay that works best for you. You can also choose to show source formatting. So this is the formatting of the original document. I'm going to go ahead and turn that one off. Once you've chosen your color overlay, I'm just going to go with tan, then you can choose the next is grammar options. For grammar, you can choose to indicate the syllables in each word. If you toggle this on, you will notice that each word is broken down into different syllables. Now, it will read at the same speed and with the same voice that you chose in the previous tab. Identify negative effects humans have on a species or the planet. Other things that you can do in the grammar tab or toggle on the parts of speech. So if I want to see the nouns, I can choose nouns and it will show nouns in whatever color I choose. So if you have a grammar book that your child is using or your child's teacher uses a specific color for each type of or part of speech, you can choose that. So if we wanted to use dark blue for nouns, I could change that color. I can toggle on my verbs and use green. For adjectives, I might want to use purple and then I can toggle adjectives on. And then I also have adverbs over here in gold. And so once they're all toggled on, you will see that each word or part of speech is highlighted based on what it is. Now I also have show labels toggled. If I turn this off, you will notice that it does not indicate the part of speech, but if I put it on above each part of speech, then it now appears. So like the word create has a V for verb, haiku has an N for noun, and so forth. This will not change the way it is read aloud to you, so it will continue to read the same. Planet. Create a haiku that is school appropriate. So you can toggle those on and off. 
Once you're done with your uh, syllable options or your grammar options, the next thing you can do is your reading preferences. If you click on reading preferences, the first thing that you will see is line focus. If you turn line focus on, you will notice it works like a reading ruler where you have one line highlighted at a time. Your options are to have one line highlighted, three lines highlighted, or multiple lines or paragraph highlighted. When you choose this, it will still read again the same. Appropriate. Create a haiku that highlights next. So you will be able to see here how it still is going to highlight each word as it reads. The next option you have is picture dictionary. On picture dictionary, if it is on, you're able to click on the word and if it has a picture, you're able to see. You can also listen to words in isolation. Notice this one when I clicked on negative, even though it doesn't have a picture, I can choose negative and I can choose to listen to that one word. Here, the word school, you will notice that we have pictures that pop up depending on the way it's used. School. And so you have the classroom setting, the school building, and a school of fish or group of fish. So it will give you multiple pictures for multiple meaning words. After that, the next thing that we have is your translator tool. So Immersive Reader has 65 languages available for translation and 45 are able to be translated and read aloud. So I'm going to go over here to Spanish, Mexico, and I can choose by word if I want. And any word I highlight, it will translate for me. So you notice I can click on the word and I'm able to listen in English. Humans. And Spanish. Los humanos. Now, if I need the entire document translated, I can choose to translate by clicking document. And now it will play. Crear haiku. Objetivos. Identificar los efectos negativos que los humanos tienen en una especie. And we'll read for you in Spanish. Once you create your settings, any document that you use in Immersive Reader will pull up the same way. So if I were to choose a different document, my settings would remain the same. If you want to undo a setting, you must go back and toggle it off so that it goes back to the, its original settings. I hope all of this information helps and I hope this helps you guys better understand how to use Immersive Reader with your child. If you have any questions, please feel free to email your child's teacher and I hope you guys have a great and wonderful school year.